Hello and welcome to NPTEL MOOC on Applied Electromagnetics for Engineers. In this module, we will begin the study of electrostatic fields via Laplace and Poisson's equation. Okay. What is this electrostatic field? We are already acquainted with Maxwell's equations where we discussed how the electric field E, the magnetic field H, the magnetic flux density vector B and the electric flux density D they all are related to the charge distribution in general the charge distribution can be volume charge distribution rho v and current distribution j which in general can be a surface current distribution so how does all these equations relate or how does all these quantities relate to each other is given by maxwell's equations and we have studied these maxwell's equations we have looked at those equations and we have also seen what happens when you actually have two different media uh, in that case, we have studied boundary conditions which relate the electric fields and magnetic fields in one region to electric fields and magnetic fields in the other region. In general, solving these Maxwell's equations, which are most general case, okay, is actually quite complicated. Okay. There are few scenarios where these Maxwell's equations can be simplified okay, and these scenarios are quite practical. In fact, most of your introduction to Maxwell's equations would not have been through the general time varying Maxwell equations, but rather through the subject called as electrostatics. In electrostatics, Maxwell's equations can be simplified simply because we assume that the charge distribution that is the way the charges have been spread, the way the charges have been constructed, this charge distribution uh, this constructed in the space, this charge distribution does not vary with time. So, if you you know get to the simplest of the scenario if you consider a simple point charge and you fix the point charge at some particular point then this point charge the amount of the point charge will always remain constant with respect to time however there will be an electric field generated because of that particular charge and that electric field also happens to be independent of time in other words time has no effect when you consider electrostatic fields okay so, that is the meaning of static, static is with respect to time. So, these fields can also be considered as time invariant electromagnetic fields or rather time invariant electric field because we will be mostly interested only with the static electric field and we describe the static electric field or we try to find the static electric field by way of solving a set of equations known as Laplace and Poisson's equation. Okay. As I said, static conditions arise when the time dependence is you know, taken out. In other, in other words, when the charge distribution happens to be constant with respect to time and of course varies only with respect to space, then you know that the d field that this charge generates will be independent of time. So, no more d of r comma t, but you simply obtain d of r, which in turn generates an electric field this is the model that we have considered how the charges are related to electric fields inside a medium. If it is vacuum then rho v the charge density will directly tell you what is the electric field intensity E of r. Okay. So, you have this electric field also independent of time which means that the corresponding quantities that we had looked at for example, when you go to Faraday's law or modified Ampere's law or modified Ampere Maxwell law this had this condition that the curl of the magnetic field must be equal to some current plus some del d by del t which was the displacement current. Now, because our d happens to be only function of the space coordinate and not the time coordinate, this quantity will actually be equal to 0. Right? So, this quantity will be 0. Further, if I assume that we are dealing with a scenario where there are no currents because currents mean charges have to be changing with respect to time that is what the relationship between the current density j and the charge density rho v that we have seen in the charge conservation equation or the continuity equation. So, we for now consider the scenario where our displacement current is 0 because the charge distribution is static with respect to time and hence the d field is also static with respect to time correspondingly del d by del t term is 0 and we also consider the scenarios where we have no currents whatsoever which means j is 0. So, you now have a very trivial field for the magnetic field h and the magnetic field h must be equal to 0. There are no magnetic fields because there are no currents. Okay. Now, if h is 0 because b and h are related by the permeability, b also happens to be 0. Now, because b is 0, 
the condition for Faraday's law when you write the Faraday's law in the differential form you see that del cross E which describes the curl of the electric field and since the electric field is now only a function of space the proper way to write this one would be E of R. So, this del cross E of R must be equal to 0 since this term the flux density or the flux linkage to that particular point where we were considering which is given by minus del B by del T this term is actually equal to 0. Why is this equal to 0? Because we have considered the case where there are no currents, no currents means no H, no H means no B and no B means this right hand term is equal to 0. So, you see that all of the electrostatics can actually be described by a set of two equations, the two curl equations which have nothing to do whatsoever with the magnetic fields in this case. So, what we say is that the electric fields and the magnetic fields become decoupled with each other that is these two are decoupled with respect to each other. The electric field that is when the charge distribution is fixed I am sorry here this should have been the charge distribution rho v. So, the charge distribution once it is fixed with respect to space will generate a time invariant or static D field, static D field will be related to the static electric field. Okay. So, these two equations are sufficient to describe the entire field of electrostatics. However, these two equations still are a little bit of a problem for us to solve because you need to know the charge distribution. If you know the charge distribution, you find out what is D. Once you know what is D, then you find out what is the electric field E. But unfortunately, in many practical scenarios, the charge distribution is an unknown quantity. In fact, you want to find out the charge distribution as a result of solving these equations. So, you cannot specify electric field because that is what you are trying to find out. You cannot specify D field because that is again what you are trying to find out. Nor you can specify the charge density rho v because that is something that is usually very difficult to measure and hence that is also unknown. If everything is unknown, then you you know there seems to be a case that there is no this is a no hope situ situation because everything is unknown and therefore, I cannot solve for any field quantity. However, this vector field relationship that we have del cross E equal to 0 serves us to introduce another auxiliary electrostatic quantity which we call as the potential or in general words we call this as a voltage. Okay. So, this voltage and potential are essentially one and the same there is a small difference between the two which we do not have to go through here now. This potential which will be a function of space will actually be a scalar field and it can be found out even if you do not know the charge distribution. In fact, in most cases you specify the potentials that need to exist at different points in your circuit. Based on that information you can find out the potential everywhere. From potential you can find out the electric field, from electric field you find out the D field from D field you find out the charge distribution. So, this is the route a little circum you know circum kind of a route that we are going to take it is not a straightforward path seems to be, but this is one of the most practical paths that you will take because it is easy in laboratory to specify potentials or voltages at different points okay, rather than to specify the charge distribution and the corresponding electric and D field vectors. So, that is the route that we go. So, what is this potential that I am talking about? Well, I know that curl of electric field is equal to 0. So, this actually you know from some vector algebra you can brush up that vector algebra later on or refer to appropriate textbook tells you that if there is any vector field quantity whose curl is equal to 0 this is an irrotational kind of a field then this implies that it is possible for us to express this electric field or any vector quantity whose curl is equal to 0 in terms of a certain scalar field. Okay. The scalar field is denoted by V of R and V is something that would remind us of voltage and voltage is the quantity that is related to potential. In fact, you measure potential in terms of fields. So, you have a nice scalar field here okay, which of course, is still dependent and changing with respect to points in the space, but note that this is a scalar field and if I somehow I am able to solve for this field V of R everywhere in the region that I am interested in, then using this gradient I can obtain the electric field and from the relationship between E and D I can obtain D and using Gauss's law I can then obtain what is the charge distribution or we will also circumvent that problem by actually you know going to what is called as Poisson equation which relates V to rho V okay, rho V being the volume charge density. To gain an understanding as to what this potential is 
the basic idea of a potential is how much uh, no work you do so this is the amount of work that you do okay in order to move a charge amount of work done on the charge okay in moving this particular charge from a point b to point a we then say that there exists a potential difference v a b between these two points and this potential is given by an integral of the electric field so this is just the way you go about you know the gradient equation and then you invert or integrate this gradient equation in order to obtain this line integral so we say that point a is at a potential v a b with respect to point b when you know by defining this particular thing as the amount of work done on the charge in moving a charge from point b to a to give you slightly you know better idea of what is happening so imagine that everywhere you have an electric field e okay so these are all your electric field e directed in this particular way and you want to move a charge from some point b here along this particular path and reach the point a here okay what is the work done in moving a small distance dl along the path here the work done must be equal to whatever the charge or whatever the force that is uh, present at this particular point on the charge okay so let's say this is the way the force is present and force dot dl that is the small amount of distance that you have moved along this particular path will give you the amount of work that is done however when you have only electric static field here the force that is a particular charge is experiencing is given by the amount of the charge that you have q times the electric field at that particular point so for example i am considering this at a point b and i move a small distance dl then the work done will be given by f dot dl where f is the electric field at that particular point times the charge so at b if i say that this is the electric field then i should actually orient my f along e because f is now equal to q times e okay so this is how the force will be present or the electric field that is present at this particular point and then multiply that one by q in order to obtain the force at that point p and then you now take the dot product of this force along this dl or with respect to dl you know vector and then you obtain the amount of work that is done however this work is being done by the charge but the work done on the charge will be denoted by a negative sign and this would be given by minus f dot dl okay and substituting for f you get q e dot dl this is the amount of work done in moving a small distance dl if you now think of these different paths okay so you can think of these small paths over here and then everywhere you have the electric field out there take the dot product and you know sum up all these quantities you get the total amount of work done in moving a charge of magnitude q from b to a and this charge or the work done on this particular charge per charge so work done in moving a charge from b to a per charge is what we call as the potential vab and this is given by minus integral of b to a e dot dl okay and it is this v which actually satisfies so if you know what is the potential difference at any every point so you can select one point as a reference point and then you calculate potential here you potential here potential here everywhere you calculate the potential in essence knowing what is this scalar quantity v of r then inverting this relationship differentiating this and then adjusting it for the nature you obtain the relation e of r equal to minus gradient v of r okay so this is the relation that actually is you know that we have discussed in the previous slide and this is what is the starting point for obtaining laplace's equation what is laplace's equation consider some region okay so this is a region that i am considering it has some surface s and some volume v and it is surrounded by a certain contour out there okay inside this if i assume that there are no charges so there are no charges here it could be volume charges it could be line charges or surface charges it could be line charge okay so this is your line charge this could be the surface charge or in general it could be a point charge as well so some q and also neglect that there are any currents that is there are no currents inside this region then gauss's law if you apply this over this entire closed surface will tell you that del dot d must be equal to zero there are no charges inside right 
However, D is something that is related to electric field in a simple matter in the way of epsilon times E where epsilon is what is called as the dielectric permittivity of the material. So, what we are saying and you know taking epsilon which is a constant out of this dot product is that del dot E is also equal to 0. Okay, because you substitute this d into this del dot d equal to 0 equation Gauss's law and then essentially what you obtain is this del dot e equal to 0. But I know what is e, e is nothing but minus gradient of v. So, I substitute that one here. So, this equation tells me that del dot del v equal to 0 and we give a special name for this del dot del and denote this one as del square okay. and this del square is what we call as a Laplacian operator. Okay. The Laplacian operator is actually given by the dot product of del with itself okay. and this is the notation that we use for a Laplacian which is given by del square okay, in the Cartesian coordinate system. These expressions are very easy to remember in the Cartesian coordinate system. At other coordinate system unfortunately you have to take a look at a book or you have to take a look at a reference handbook or something because these expressions are not so simple in other coordinate systems. We will look at mostly rectangular coordinate system and in this rectangular coordinate system this del square is defined as you know partial derivative of the you know any quantity that on which this del square operates. So, del square by del x square plus del square by del y square plus del square by del z square. Okay. So, this equation which I have circled okay, is a very important equation and this equation is called as Laplace's equation. Okay. Suppose now I assume instead of having no charges inside I as continue to assume that there are no currents, but there are charges. Okay. In that case what will happen to the equations? So, you now no longer can write del dot d equal to 0, but you have to write down what is in general the amount of volume charge density in this region. So, you have del dot d equal to rho v, do not worry d is still related to electric field E by the permittivity epsilon. So, I can substitute this d equal to epsilon E into this equation and write this as del dot E equal to rho v by epsilon. And then I say electric field E is related to the potential or the voltage v out there. So, I go back and substitute for electric field. So, I get del dot del v equal to minus rho v by epsilon and we have already discussed what is this del dot del which is nothing but Laplacian. So, you have del square of v at any particular point r be given by the volume charge density at that point rho v divided by the permittivity epsilon. So, let me put a box around this because this equation is what is called as Poisson's equation. Okay. So, Laplace's equation and Poisson's equation both tell you how the voltages are related in a particular region. If del square v equal to 0 that is there are no charges enclosed by this closed surface, then the condition that holds is that del square v equal to 0 and that is called as the Laplace's equation. And when there are a few charges enclosed within that discharges could be charge density in various forms and that charge density divided by epsilon with a minus sign will then be equal to del square of v. So, and that is called as the Poisson's equation. Amongst these two equations it is slightly easier first to solve for Laplace's equation that is what we are going to do now and then we talk of Poisson's equation later on. So, for the next few minutes and for the next few modules or at least one module we will be talking about how to solve Laplace's equation. Okay. Now, before we start studying this Laplace's equation, let us actually go back once more to this voltage difference V A B and then actually try to find out you know in if the charge distribution is given, then can I find out what is the voltage. Now, that is a straightforward case right. So, if charge distribution in the space is known to you, then I can use that information to find out what is the potential. So, we will actually do that one first and then come back to Laplace's equation. So, let me not just jump directly to Laplace's equation first you get a idea of what V A B is. When I consider a single point charge also assume that the point charge is at you know having a magnitude of plus q and this is the charge that is present. Okay. The simplest way to solve this problem is to actually imagine that you know a sphere which is closed okay, this did not close it itself. So, there is a sphere which you can assume it to be closed and let us say this sphere has a radius of about r. Okay. 
and you are considering this pair in the three dimensional spherical coordinate system. Okay. And now apply Gauss's law because this problem has too much of a symmetry in the sense that there is a point charge. Now you imagine that there is a point charge here okay? and then you are going around a sphere as you keep going along a particular circle on the sphere, okay, you keep going does the charge distribution look different to you? The charge distribution does not look different to you. So, it looks the same charge right. So, I am standing maybe here I get the same charge you know I see the same charge. I move here on the circle of constant radius r. I see the same charge, I see the same charge everywhere. I might even decide to look from the theta direction. So, I might start looking from the top and then go either like this or like this. Whenever I you know turn my neck, the charge distribution does not really change because it is just a point charge. Therefore, you can immediately conclude that the electric field that is generated by this charge must only be in the radial or rather it should only be dependent on the radial distance. The only way you can see different charge is when you keep moving away from it. If you are far away at infinity, you do not see the charge at all and if you keep coming closer to and closer, you actually start seeing the charge. So, the electric field is actually function only of r. Also, the electric field can have only the radial direction okay? because if it has to have a phi direction. So, let us say there is some electric field because of the point charge here and since you know that electric fields have to originate from a charge and then terminate on a charge. If I need to have an electric field quantity along this phi direction, there has to be a some charge here and there has to be some other charge over here, okay, which unfortunately there is no charge out there. Even if you assume that there is no second charge over here, you simply cannot extend this line because there is absolutely no charge at this particular point. So, you actually see that electric field has only the radial component and this argument holds the same for theta as well. So, you have only the radial component and this radial component is only function of r. So, what is the corresponding Gauss's law? So, Gauss's law is essentially the closed surface integral okay, where you consider this particular this one as a surface area ds and luckily this surface area is actually the constant radius surface area which is given by r square sin theta d theta d phi and then electric field which is unknown to you, but it has only the radial component is given by E r of r and at a particular value of r this electric field is constant. It will be directed radially outward, but it would be constant and d s r will only depend on theta and phi because small r is constant. So, at a constant radius small r then this particular Gauss's law will tell you that integral of d dot d s is q but then I am writing d as epsilon e and assuming you know epsilon to be constant. So, this fellow will be q by epsilon and then integrating the electric field which is a constant at a particular radial distance from the charge okay, will give me E r into 4 pi r square which is the surface area of the sphere at a constant radius r and this is equal to q by epsilon and you have E r is equal to q by 4 pi epsilon r square. Okay. Now, imagine that I want to find out what is the potential at that particular point. Okay. What I do is I imagine myself first that there is an infinity point here whose potential you know v of infinity I take it to be 0. So, this infinity is your point b for you in this calculation. So, I imagine that potential at that infinity will be equal to 0 and then bring this charge from infinity all the way to the point A over here. So, which is on the sphere that I am considering. So, when I have to take this path, let me actually take a path which is radial, you know I am coming in in a radial direction. So, that way it is easier and I have to contend with the electric field. So, if this is a positive charge then the electric field will be in this way and if I am moving a charge then I am moving this charge against the field. Okay. No matter what I do the corresponding potential V A can be written from the expression with infinity as point B and we have already seen that the potential at point B is taken to be equal to 0. So, V A is equal to minus integral of infinity to A, I am bringing this one from infinity to point A. The electric field is Q by 4 pi epsilon r square along the radial direction. The path that I have taken is also the radial direction. So, I can take this dot product and then simplify this relation or rather integrate this equation and obtain that the potential on any point at a radial distance r from the positive charge plus q is given by q by 4 pi epsilon r. So, this was a problem 
which essentially told us how to calculate and how to utilize symmetry can be extended to many many cases and I am pretty sure you have seen lot of those electrostatic field you know calculations some of these field calculations are quite hard but then in principle you can you know make use of Gauss's law you can make use of uh, symmetry properties and then you can you know with some amount of mathematical maturity you can calculate electrostatic fields in many many different charge configurations ok. And once you calculate what is the electric field you can then find out what would be the potential at different points. Only thing that you have to note down is that the potential field will always be perpendicular to the electric field. So, if this is a constant V equal to constant contour then the electric field will always be perpendicular to that one. Okay. And that relationship happens simply because electric field is related to the potential V using the gradient operation and gradient tells you how the scalar field is changing you know that potato example that we gave in one of the previous modules can be thought back over here and then understand that whenever I have a potential gradient okay, which is the electric field that gradient will be perpendicular to the direction of constant or that would be perpendicular to the contour of constant potential V. Okay. So, this was an example of you know solving a straightforward problem, but we are not really interested in solving this straightforward problem. We are interested in actually trying to solve a problem in which the potential is specified. Okay. And I consider a very simplest case of this. So, I consider two conducting plates whose areas are very very large. Okay. So, I neglect or I consider the area to be very very large and I consider the you know the distance between these two uh, plates. So, these are all both perfectly conducting plates. Okay. So, these are all nice metal plates which with an infinite amount of sigma that you can think of okay. and they have an area A you know this is the area A of uh, this one which is you know as I said is quite large. Okay. So, below this plate at a distance of about say D I place another plate this is also a conducting plate. Okay, made out of a metal of the same as the top plate and it has also sigma of going sigma going towards infinity. Now, what I do is I ground this bottom conductor and I apply a potential of V0. So, I can do that by simply connecting a voltage generator out there, okay. connect this one to the top conductor and then connect this one to the bottom conducting plate. So, I have actually specified that the potential everywhere on the bottom conducting plate is 0, the potential everywhere on the top is actually a constant value of V0. What I want is to find out what is the electric field E, what is the D field E and an important quantity called as the capacitance. Capacitance if you remember is the amount of charge on a single plate. So, this is the total charge on a given plate divided by the potential difference between the two plates. Okay, or between any two conductors and this is the quantity that we want to solve for. We will do that in the next module when we solve Laplace's equation. This is the case where Laplace's equation help us to solve and then find out the corresponding values of E, D and C. Thank you very much.